But what if you could mimic the effects of a volcano using a controlled release of sulfur aerosols to roll back the effects of global warming? David Keith thinks it should be possible to reproduce the sunscreen effect of a volcano using high-altitude airplanes to spray sulfuric acid into the sky. Several colleagues and I are in the middle of thinking about how we'd actually put sulfur in the stratosphere. If you put the H2SO4 in directly from an aircraft, you can make the right size of particles, which you really need to have a geoengineering with the smallest side effects. We might be right, we might be wrong, but at some level, the only way to really find out is to actually run a small experiment. What Keith has in mind is NASA's high-altitude research aircraft, the ER-2. These former spy planes are fully equipped to measure exactly what would happen with a vapor trail of sulfuric acid. You'd use a high-altitude aircraft that could get you to 65, 70,000 feet in the stratosphere. And so you could imagine using that air to release a stream of sulfuric acid gas on a plume that was maybe no more than 5 or 10 kilometers long, and it would be a couple hundred meters wide. And then you'd fly back and forth through that plume as it evolved, measuring the size of the particles and the impact on atmospheric chemistry and so on. And that would be an experiment. But Alan Robach warns that chaotic weather patterns could skew the results. For example, this past year, there was a really bad Indian monsoon. There was much less than average precipitation. And it was probably just part of natural variability. So if that happens when you're testing geoengineering, how do you tell whether that caused it or not? The only way to do it is to do it for a long period of time so you can average over long periods of time. Robot believes spraying acid in the sky is such a bad idea, he can recite at least 20 reasons why we should not do it. He agrees we need research to find out whether there's any way at all to stop or delay a climate emergency. But he thinks computer models are a far safer way to go. I want to propose that experimentation be with computers for a long time before we ever do stuff into the atmosphere. You, you do an experiment to answer a question. If you want to know what the effect of a stratospheric aerosol cloud will be on the climate, we can do that in computer models that have been validated by testing past natural experiments that the world has actually done by volcanic eruptions. For example, computer models have already been used to recreate the climate effects of Mount Pinatubo. So why not use a computer to predict what a man-made acid sunscreen would do? Well, Keith, for one, thinks there are things a computer model cannot tell you. And the only way to find out whether there really is a plan B for planet Earth is to fly up there and try to cool the atmosphere. You would learn stuff from that experiment that you could never learn with certainty sitting in your laboratory. The large-scale environmental impacts of this would be zero, because we're talking about a tiny amount of sulfur, much less than a single big ship going across the ocean. I think that society can make a decision about that with a lot of theory and climate modeling. I'm not sure we really have to test it. At some point in the future, if climate change gets really bad and somebody decides we need an acid sunscreen to save the day, a fast and relatively cheap way to do that might be to use unmanned drone aircraft, similar to those now used in war zones. They would have to be big enough to carry a load of chemicals, with wings modified to enhance the spread of the vapor trails into a stratospheric sunscreen. The problem is that this will not only reduce the incoming heat, it will almost certainly reduce the amount of rain falling, especially in the tropics. Putting these reflective aerosols in the stratosphere will cool the planet and also change rainfall patterns. It's especially notable that the Asian monsoon got weaker during Pinatubo. Which is precisely why Robok would rather run his experiments in a computer. Because it's less risky. We only have one planet. We can't really mess with our planet. Our laboratory is a computer model of the planet. So we can do two runs, with and without geoengineering, and see what the effect is on the Asian monsoon, for example. We can do it for 100 years and average out over all the El Ninos and La Ninos. That's what I advocate, is that kind of experiment for quite a while with lots of different climate models to see how robust the results are. Several of the world's top computer models have already run geoengineering simulations that showed cooler temperatures worldwide. But they also showed less rainfall, 
weakening the monsoons and creating drought conditions in both Asia and in sub-Saharan Africa. Blocking the sun cools the ocean as well as land, so cooler water could mean less evaporation, fewer clouds, and less rain. The bottom line seemed to be that forcing the temperature down caused some places to benefit, while others got worse. It's true that the precipitation, the total amount of rainfall, would generally go down, but also the evaporation rate, the rate at which rain evaporates off warm ground, will go down. And what crops really depend on is the amount of soil moisture, and it's not obvious if that goes up or down. If geoengineering brought the temperature down, the good effects of cooling might outweigh the negative effects of less rain. But scientists would still have to do new research to find out how food crops react. Would they survive better with cooler air, even though there was less moisture? So I would say to really figure out how serious a problem we have, you've got to do research that simply hasn't been done yet. So if somebody goes now and says that it's clear that large-scale geoengineering would have hugely bad effects on farmers in the Indian subcontinent, that is simply false. Even though Keith's experiment would involve no more than a ton of sulfuric acid, do we know what happens with all that stuff when it comes down? He's pretty sure that some people will voice legitimate concerns. It's not important whether it's feasible, it's important whether it's safe. I think people would have legitimate deep concerns about this, not because the experiment itself is dangerous, but because clearly the experiment is aimed at improving our understanding of how we actually manipulate the whole climate deliberately. The concept of a sulfuric sunscreen is so controversial, so fraught with implications, that scientists are concerned about public perceptions and acceptance. How will the research be done? Who will make the rules? Could one nation go it alone? And how much would it cost? We've been paying an aircraft engineering company to figure out what it costs. Their estimates are a couple billion a year to manipulate the whole planet's climate. If manipulating the climate would cost only two billion a year, with a global economy worth 50 trillion, then the real cost would be dirt cheap if the whole world chipped in. These are technologies that give us enormous leverage over the planet, where once you know how to put a kind of aerosol in the stratosphere, then an incredibly small amount of money allows you to manipulate the whole planet's climate. It gives humans enormous godlike powers. One of the issues with geoengineering is, as David Keith says, it's easy and cheap. I'm not sure I agree with that, but if it's true, that means anybody could do it. And how would we tell if anybody was doing it? For nations that may not have jet drones or high-tech capabilities, there could be low-tech alternatives using balloons. About a dozen retired three and four star admirals and generals came out with a report in 2007 that was titled climate change and the threat to national security pretty strong implication that it wasn't just a debate among environmentalists and big business or climate scientists it was rather truly a national security issue that we need dennis mcginn a retired u.s navy admiral confirms that climate change scenarios have become an important aspect of military strategic planning we from a national security military perspective viewed the effects of climate change as acting as a threat multiplier for instability in key regions of the world no event can be blamed on climate change no single event, but when you are a humanitarian organization and you see that in Malawi, in Senegal, in Fiji, in Peru, all over the world we're seeing all these bizarre things happening that kill people, that make people suffer. If you ask the relatives and the friends of those who died, they're going to say, it's already happened. Now the question is, do we do this geoengineering thing? It's very scary.